All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. It is uh, Monday, January 13th. I am Dr. Jason Bradley, the uh, founder of Epic Functional Medicine Center and the developer and creator of the Epic 5 plan. And I am super excited. Today is our first uh, live Q&A um, about the, the detox that we just launched. Um, this is going to be a 21-day detox. And it's, it's a pretty simple one. In fact, um, I'm going to jump into the details here pretty soon, but there's no products to buy. Um, there's no uh, you know, special detox you know, supplements. Um, there's nothing more that you guys need to know than what I'm going to share with you guys over the course of today and through the week. And if this goes well, I thought that what we could do is continue this next week. I'm going to try to set it for noon every day, uh, Monday through Friday, and I'll be recording these. In fact, this is getting recorded right now. And um, let me just do this real fast. Perfect. Great. Um, and uh, I'll be uploading these into the Epic 5 Plan community. So in case you happen to miss one, you can just jump in and, you know, get caught up. I don't really have a timeline for these. Um, noon is my lunch. And so, you know, I have a, an hour scheduled for lunch, um, which I'm very, <laughs> very thankful for. Um, and so, you know, we can, we can go 15 minutes. We can go, you know, up maybe to 45, 50 minutes. And my goal is, again, to lay down the foundation of uh, what the Epic 5 plan is, you know, what the Epic 5 plan detox is, and how that plays into kind of greater health uh, roles. And then obviously answer you guys' questions and answers, um, or questions, and I'll give you guys some answers if I can. Um, boy, if I get my mouth to work today, it would be great. Sorry, I'm running just a little bit late today. I think we got started at 11.05 instead of 11. Um, I, uh, I had not gotten this into my schedule yet uh, for the week. I wanted to make them noon every day, and it just didn't work out with noon today. So I'm glad to be starting actually maybe 55 minutes early, but five minutes later than the time that we started or the time that we allotted. So I see that some folks have joined us. Um, that's fantastic. And hopefully some more folks will be joining us um, as, the, as the period goes on, the sessions go on. But now that we've posted, I'm, I'm assuming that you know, through the rest of the week, uh, we'll make sure to have you know, more and more participants. And I'm excited again to have you guys here. And thank you guys for taking the time with us. Um, I think as far as structure goes uh, for these, and again, uh, I do a weekly uh, call with all of my clients or, or whatever clients want to join on Wednesdays at 4.30. Uh, and it's kind of a, a private group session where, again, we kind of dig into a topic. Um, again, today's topic will be the Epic 5 plan and the Epic 5 plan detox. And uh, on those Wednesdays, the way that we do it is um, people can just kind of weigh in as we're going through it, ask questions. There's a little chat box that you can open up. Um, I recommend that you ask your questions in the chat box. Uh, you can send them you know, publicly to everyone. You can send them privately just to me. Uh, and I'm happy to answer those questions as they come in in real time. I'll try to keep my eyes. So if you see me uh, looking down, uh, down in this direction, it's because I'm looking at that chat box to see if anybody um, has posted a, a question. So um, I'm just going to get uh, started. Uh, first of all, just some of you guys know me, some of you guys don't know me. Um, and I thought I'd just quickly introduce myself. Um, again, I'm Dr. Jason Bradley. I've been in uh, practicing functional medicine for a little over 20 years at this point. I was one of the early adopters. Uh, functional medicine is a new uh, uh, board certification in uh, medicine. Our goal is resolution of uh, symptoms, disorders, diseases, um, at least as much as we can. We want to help people get off of medicines, get off of supplements, and uh, really just help the body function in the best way that it can, hence the word functional medicine. Um, we do that at Epic by diving deeply into internal medicine. We do a lot of laboratory work, um, trying to sort out the root causes of people's suffering. Uh, we also you know, look at genetics. We look at environment, both home environment, work environment, other environments as they come into play. Um, certainly diet, lifestyle. Today, we're going to be talking about diet. Um, this is the exact same foundation that we use with our, you know, chronic, uh, our patients with chronic illnesses from all around the world. Um, this is our jumping off point. And then we also take a look at um, psychosocial relationships and really trying to address that whole person as opposed to uh, just, so sorry, guys, um, uh, address that whole person as opposed to just their symptoms um, as in general medicine. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm excited to be in the practice of functional medicine. I've seen lives transformed. Um, I've seen, quote, hopeless and helpless cases um, completely revolutionized um, and, and people being able to take control of their health, their happiness, and their life and their futures. And I'm just, I'm just honored and proud to be part of uh, this new movement in medicine. So um, today, I want to talk about the development of the Epic Five. I want to lay down some basic foundations for the detox um, and then just kind of uh, answer your questions, as I said, as we're, as we're going along. Um, so the Epic Five was recently named the Epic Five, I would say recently as in the last couple of years. Um, it's actually been in practice or in play since about 2004 to 2007 was when it really got deeply into development. 
uh, back in, uh, I pr started practicing in late 1999 and I, you know, was doing okay. Um, you know, applying what I knew at the time. I was a young doctor. Um, I was taking care of my patients and I was not taking care of myself. And uh, I, I, I wouldn't say that I let myself go. I was doing the best that I could, just like a lot of you guys. Um, you know, we're, we're really conditioned, most of us as human beings, to take care of everyone else around us and everything else around us and then putting ourselves last. And that's what I was doing. And in 2004, I realized that, you know, I was waking up to my alarm clock, um, dreading the day already. I was already exhausted, even though I, I had slept. Um, and whether or not I had a good night's sleep or not, it didn't matter. Um, I woke up feeling exhausted. Um, I had to literally talk myself into getting my feet on the floor just to get through my day. I had to, you know, will myself um, to get to work, you know, and play those, those head games like I've got to go to work. Um, you know, I had a mortgage to pay. I had kids to feed. Um, I certainly had uh, uh, student loans to pay off, uh, which I, I swear will never be paid off. Uh, I think a lot of you guys are probably in the same boat. And um, uh, I, I would go to work and I would give everything that I had to my clients. Um, literally my heart and my soul, my blood, sweat, and tears poured into my clinic. And by the end of that day, I had nothing left. I had burned through whatever little amount of energy that I could muster up. I had burned through it. I had no reserves. I would drive home. And uh, uh, sometimes I get emotional when I tell this story. So I don't know about today. I'm, I'm kind of running on adrenaline because I was running late. So uh, uh, who knows? I apologize if I, if I get a little teary-eyed and the waterworks come on. But um, I would get home. And I realized that I was sitting in my car in the driveway with my hands on the steering wheel. And um, I had two little kids inside, a four-year-old and a one-year-old daughter who hadn't seen their daddy all day. And uh, I love my kids and they love me and we have a great relationship um, to this day. But, you know, I would go in with nothing left to give and I would have to psych myself up just to be their dad. I knew they needed me, but I had nothing left. I had nothing left. Um, so I'd psych myself up and I would play with the kids. And what that means is I would help them quickly put away their toys. Um, that was our playtime. Um, I would make them food. I would, um, you know, feed them, bathe them, get them ready for bed, uh, tuck them in, you know, read them a story, uh, and then lights out so that I could hustle myself into bed. My goal was uh, to be in bed and asleep by 8 p.m. every night. So I had no quality time with my family. I had no quality time with friends. I had no quality time uh, you know, with, um, with myself for sure. And, and it just got worse and worse. I, I had gained weight. Um, I was up to, at, in 2004, up to 275 pounds. Um, I did weigh in this morning at, uh, 161. Um, and, uh, I'm sorry, I'm on a Mac and I love my Mac by the way, but I get these little messages that pop up all the time. Um, it's saying that a couple of people are having some issues joining. Um, so I'll have to fix that for next time. So if you missed it uh, this time, I'll make sure those links are working. Obviously it worked for some people, so we'll have to figure that out. Um, but nonetheless, I, I had you know, gained a lot of weight. I had brain fog, I had migraines, I had migrating pain um, through all of my joints in my body. My muscles were sore and weak. Um, I, I, I had literally no quality of life. In fact, I ended up losing um, my marriage over this. Um, my, uh, my first wife, I think, stuck it out as long as she could. And, um, and genuinely, I had nothing left, uh, nothing left to offer anybody. Um, and again, so I uh, kind of co-parented, I was single parenting. And then in 2004, I had to step back and uh, leave my practice. And my practice, again, uh, was my livelihood, um, was my passion. Um, it was my dream to have a private practice. And I was open for about five years and I had to, uh, you know, uh, move, uh, move on. Um, I went back and got a job at the university and I was teaching and um, I had a lot of research time and I decided to research what the heck was going on with me. Um, you know, here I am um, trained in general medicine, trained in naturopathic medicine, uh, trained in, you know, all sorts of alternative medicines and certainly uh, trained in functional med medicine. And um, uh, I was still falling apart. And I felt like I was doing everything right. I felt like I was eating the right foods. Um, I felt like I was trying to move as much as I could, but again, I had no energy. So of course, you know, that was one of the first things that went out. I thought I was drinking enough water. I thought, you know, I was managing my stress well. I thought I had good sleep-wake patterns. I thought I was, you know, taking the right supplements, um, you know, and, and again, my life still fell apart. So over the course of three years, I discovered that uh, I did some deep diving into my own internal chemistry. 
uh, which really, uh, after my discovery, really changed the way I practiced completely in the labs that I ordered. But I found out that I had an autoimmunity. Um, I was actually two autoimmunities, actually, technically three autoimmunities. Um, I had an autoimmunity in my gut, which uh, uh, I hadn't really even thought about um, and really wasn't causing me major problems. Um, but nonetheless, it was still there. And then I was also positive for um, what's called anti-nuclear antibody. Uh, that is basically uh, somewhere between a disease called mixed connective tissue disease, and then on the other end, things like lupus and scleroderma. Um, I also was positive for Hashimoto's um, lymphocytic thyroiditis. So basically, my body was under an attack uh, by its own immune system. Uh, my thyroid is being torn apart. That anti-nuclear antibody, um, that type of antibody with the immune system attacks all of the cells, um, the entire you know DNA structure of every cell. Um, some tissues are more um, under attack than other tissues. Uh, but nonetheless, um, that's what was going on with my body. And then again, my gut. And, and so I said, well, you know, what do I need to do to, you know, maybe that's what's wrong with me, right? I mean, what do I need to do to maybe dampen that, uh, that autoimmunity, uh, that reaction? And I started looking at things that we can do that are within our control of, you know, restoring health, restoring function, taking control of the immune system. Um, and I found out that, you know, there's some basics here if we remove the triggers that are causing insults to the body, those noxious triggers, anything from food sensitivities to uh, you know, heavy metal toxicities, maybe too much of a hormone. I was really high in estrogen and insulin. Um, those are both inflammatory and causing problems uh, in people's bodies. And then if we put in um, the right nutrients, uh, make sure that we have enough hormones, uh, make sure that we have the right regulatory mechanisms in place for the immune system, it just kind of dials it down. Um, so I, I started there and I felt a little bit better but I knew I could feel even better. And so I started looking at, you know, historically, you know, what do people do? What do the healthiest people on this planet do? And I found out that they, and here's the epic five, I'm gonna lay it out right now. Um, uh, they drink enough water, uh, they eat the right foods, they move in the right way, in the right amount, at the right time. Um, they have a good stress management program and they have uh, a good sleep-wake pattern, um, a good evening routine, good sleep hygiene through the, through the night, and then a good waking routine to get their body uh, restored and ready for the day. And um, I dug really deep into this and started implementing it with myself. Um, by 2007, um, I, had, uh, I felt great. Um, I was feeling a whole lot better. I had lost weight. My brain fog was gone. My migraines were gone. My aches and pains through my body were gone. Um, and and I, I genuinely felt really good. I was still positive with my autoimmunity, meaning on my labs, um, they were still showing positive autoimmunity um, and some inflammation through my system. But I was at least 50% better. And I didn't actually think I could get any better. But I started fine tuning from that point on. I actually went back to practice in 2007. Um, I started fine tuning um, those five things. Again, uh, hydration, uh, diet, uh, movement, stress management, and, and sleep cycles. And really honing and honing, honing in, not only with myself, but I started implementing this with my clients. And lo and behold, we started seeing um, you know, nothing short of miracles. Again, also, I want to couple this those five things coupled with a deep dive with internal chemistry um, and some other you know, lifestyle factors, right? Um, but nonetheless, um, deep dive in the internal chemistry, we started seeing people's antibodies going negative, people's hormones balancing out, inflammation coming down. Um, you know, uh, like I said, just, just miracles, people getting their lives back. And I had gotten my life back. And we just, over the next you know, 10, 15 years, kept you know, uh, going as deep and deep and deep and deep and deep as we could um, until we finally developed a couple of years ago, we finally labeled it the Epic Five Plan, and this is our foundational plan that we use with all of all of our patients. Um, whether they're, you know, we have some clients that are, you know, like some executives um, that that feel good. They just want to make sure that their bodies are okay, and they're doing everything that they can um, to be the best uh, selves that they can on the planet, to be the most productive, um, to have the most energy, um, to be the most focused. Um, and then we also have folks where we get Hail Mary passes, where I've been everywhere. I've been to Mayo. I've been to university. I've been to St. Louis. I've been to, um, you know, Kansas City. Uh, you know, I just got a referral from Mount Sinai. Um, I got a referral from um, Cleveland Clinic, the Cleveland University Clinic uh, in Ohio recently. These folks um, that we're seeing have been everywhere. And this is the same foundation that we lay down initially um, to make sure that, uh, they're, uh, that they're getting that foundational uh, plan put together so that we can start building on it when we start to get their labs back in and personalizing their medicine. Um, so this plan we found works for just about everyone. Um, very rarely do we have any problems with it. Um, uh, it it's, it's very easy to implement. 
it really doesn't cost anything to implement this plan other than just having the knowledge to do it. And uh, what I want to do today, again, is kind of break down what we're calling the Epic Detox Diet. Um, I think it's technically called on our Teachable module. Um, so we have a whole classroom online um, on teachable.com. Uh, and again, I'll make sure to post that in the comments when I upload this video. Um, but if you guys want to join that, you're welcome to. You don't have to. Um, there is a ton of information there um, on all of the Epic Five and then plus some other some other modules, some um, you know private videos that we've shot uh, for uh, the folks that have registered for that class. And again, uh, we just want to get you guys the information that you need um, to be as healthy as possible uh, so that in 2020 and for decades to come, um, you can reclaim your health now and then keep yourself healthy. So again, coming back to that uh, teachable module, we have an entire module on detox, um, just this one thing that we're doing right now. Uh, and everything is spelled out, you know, the why we do it, um, the how we do it, the shopping lists, you know, there's some recipes in there. Um, and then also in, you know, of course, the private Facebook group, I hope that uh, this will continue. People share recipes because I am not the best cook in the world. Um, I'm going to probably have, you know, keep it very simple and I'll, I'll, I'll say what I eat here in a minute. Um, but again, I think the goal is keep it very simple. The more we try to overthink our diets, probably the less healthy it is. Um, I'll give you an example. People are always asking me, what's a good gluten-free alternative for fill in the blank? And I don't care what the fill in the blank is. Um, my answer is don't have grains. Um, don't have anything gluten-free. If it's box canned, wrap packaged, processed, just stay away from it. Um, it's probably not constructive to a healthy diet. It's probably not constructive um, to just a healthy way of being. And I know that that coming right out of the gate, the first thing that I say is really uh, contradictory to the way that we've been taught to eat. Um, it's contradictory to the way that we do eat. But I want to just emphasize that in America, we uh, are literally the, you know, one of the most, I can't say we're the most affluent country on the planet, but, I, but we are by statistics. Um, and yet we are the sickest uh, country uh, on this planet as far as, uh, quote, developed nations go. I don't like that word. Um, I think there's a lot of connotations there, but I think that we all understand what I mean. Um, we have the most expensive healthcare, the least effective healthcare, and the most um, uh, uh, dangerous healthcare on this planet, guys. And a large part of that is because we haven't been taught how to eat the right way. So again, this detox diet, this metabolic detoxification diet that we put together as part of the Epic Five plan, as, as one small piece to the Epic Five plan, um, is, is revolutionary in that it kind of turns everything on its head. What I also love about this detox diet is that my clients will tell me things like, oh my gosh, Dr. Bradley, I feel so good since you put me on that AIP diet or that keto diet or that paleo diet or um, that modified Whole 30s diet or that Walls protocol diet or the Atkins diet. And you can fill all these in, but I'll tell you right now, the Epic Five plan is none of those. Um, in fact, what we've done, and this was completely by accident, um, what we've done is, is basically gleaned the best of all of the pieces of the best diets that are out there. That, and by best, I mean the ones that have shown in the literature to you know, have the best outcomes. And then what we've done over time, like I said, over that decade plus, is that we you know, had thousands and thousands and thousands of patients that we were working with um, that we just kept tweaking and tweaking and tightening these protocols um, and, and looking at best outcome measurements. Um, we measure outcomes at Epic by objectively measuring symptoms. We quantify everything. Um, we're very left brain people. Um, so we watch those symptoms coming down every month. We can tell when people are following our plan. We can tell when things are going okay. We can tell when things are not going okay because we can jump in um, in real time and say, hey, you were doing well for months. What's going on now? Uh, and generally speaking, it's some kind of life event. And then we also measure outcomes, of course, with objective laboratory data, um, kind of black and white evidence from um, routine laboratory testing, um, but again, a very deep dive with routine laboratory testing, um, checking everything from nutrients um, to, you know, hormone structures, thyroid, adrenal, uh, you know, um, uh, metabolic pathways, of course. And I mean, the list goes on and on. It's, a, it's a too long of a, of a list to give you guys here. Um, but nonetheless, over the course of a decade plus, we accidentally gleaned um, the best from all the best diets. Um, we put together our own program. And again, I've been implementing this to help thousands of people from all around the world um, revolutionize their diet uh, and their health and take back their, you know, their happiness, their, their health, uh, and their lives in a lot of ways. So again, the basics are this. Here's the basic Epic 5 diet that we use with everybody. 
And then again, we personalize this when we get food sensitivities or other metabolic factors back with their labs. But nonetheless, here it is. It's very simple. Um, first and foremost, at the foundation of the diet is hydration. Um, it's why in the uh, pre-detox days, you know, in this thread on Facebook, um, we, you know, I said, hey, to get ready for uh, the detox, I need you guys drinking a lot of water. Um, water is life. You know, we can go for many days. Um, in fact, uh, longer than one would think without food, as long as we have nutrients and electrolytes and, and salts and things like that. Um, the longest recorded, quote, fasting period um, was uh, uh, followed in the Brit British Medical Journal for a very long time. Um, it's over 400 days um, where a gentleman um, basically fasted um, and he was morbidly obese. Uh, so he had some weight on him. So please don't do this. But um, nonetheless, uh, he fasted for a little over 400 days. Um, he did get some IV nutrition, uh, meaning that they were putting um, some saline into his body and then also um, vitamins and minerals to make sure that he didn't uh, lose nutrition. Um, and then uh, he also agreed, of course, to drink water um, and uh, sometimes with a little salt in there. And so we can go a very long time with no food. I don't recommend um, that long of a fast. We do implement fasting protocols uh, with our patients. We do implement intermittent fasting quite often with our patients, depending on the situation. Um, but again, I want you guys to know you can go a long time without food, but you can only go about 72 hours without water um, before literally it becomes a critical and deadly uh, situation. So it's a very short amount of time without water. The majority of our body is water, 75, 80% of our, wa our body is water. Um, when we get dehydrated, everything stops working and we get or a multi-system organ shut down. Um, so again, hydration is very key. We have an entire module on hydration in the epic5teachable.com. Uh, um, and again, if you want to read more about that and dive a little bit more deeply into that, you're welcome to join that. You don't need to though. Generally speaking with women, um, again, and there's some caveats to this, generally speaking with women, I recommend 100 ounces of water uh, or more each day. You're welcome to put a little pinch of uh, sea salt um, or put some electrolytes back in that water. Um, just because some of us aren't used to that much water. And I certainly wouldn't go from 20 ounces a day um, to 100 ounces a day overnight. I would, I would work yourself up there. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you can add a little bit of salts to that water, but 100 ounces for women, and typically speaking, 125 ounces for men. Um, as far as that goes, uh, again, I always say, again, caveat, or half your body weight in ounces. You know, if you were a 300-pound man, I would recommend 150 ounces of water, right? Or to minimum, 125 ounces. So again, um, easy peasy there. You can add water in and uh, it doesn't cost anything to do that except again, just remember to do that. And I'll, I'll maybe talk more about that. As far as the foods go, and this is the big you know, question of the day, and I did cover this uh, you know, earlier in a video and I kind of showed you guys our teachable uh, material um, and the shopping lists and the color coding and all that. But here's the foods. It's pretty simple. So make sure to get your water in first. Um, but, you know, eat some vegetables. Uh, I like to quote Michael Pollan, um, our good friend and uh, journalist. Um, he's written a number of books. Uh, one of my favorite ones of his is The Omnivore's Dilemma. Um, but this is what he says. Um, uh, eat vegetables. Let's see. Uh, eat real food, mostly vegetables, and not too much. And I think that's just good advice um, overall. I like to break that down a little bit into what does he mean by vegetables? Because not all vegetables are created equally. And a lot of things that we call vegetables are not vegetables at all. Um, examples, grains, corn, um, you know, uh, th legumes, things like that, right? We're going to talk more about that, um, why they're problematic. Uh, I can't remember what day it's on, but it might be Wednesday or Thursday of this week. We're going to talk about lectins and how they're destructive to the system. Um, but nonetheless, vegetables, let's break that down a little bit. We break that into three different categories. Um, first one is green leafy vegetables, right? What's a green leafy vegetable? If it's, if it's green and leafy, we're gonna call it a vegetable, right? An edible, we're gonna call it a vegetable. Uh, the second thing is cruciferous vegetables. Cruciferous vegetables um, have a long list, uh, but the kind of the, the short list um, that we're really familiar with would include things like you know broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, um, cabbage, kale, radishes, and then you know arugulas, mustard greens, turnip greens, you know, things like that, um, again, and some of those greens can cross over and be both a green and a cruciferous vegetable, right? Um, but nonetheless, cruciferous vegetables. And then um, on the last one is uh, colored vegetables that are non-nightshade uh, vegetables or are nightshades prepared correctly. Um, what the heck are nightshades? Nightshades in the short list, again, are going to be things like tomatoes, potatoes, um, not sweet potatoes, but like regular white potatoes, 
um, eggplants and peppers like bell peppers, not um, the spice uh, black pepper, right? So again, um, just to kind of break that down again, we have green leafy vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, and colored vegetables. Um, I'll talk more about the way nightshades can be prepared um, to be uh, on plan. The reason that nightshades are excluded um, uh, from the detox is that they are high in lectins. And again, I'll cover that um, a little bit down the road uh, this week in one of these calls. So again, that's, that's the vegetable portion. As far as um, the other components, the next component is gonna be healthy fats. Healthy fats are pretty simple um, these days. I think that we all know to stay away from things like vegetable oils, um, trans fatty acids, and you know, all that you know, man-made you know, manipulated oil, stay away from that stuff. But again, um, fats can come in the form of uh, avocados, um, as an example, um, even avocado oil, olive oil, um, coconut oil, um, MCT oil, certainly certain nuts and seeds. Um, and again, nuts and seeds we have to be careful with, and I'll cover this more, but nuts and seeds uh, can be included if, again, they are lectin-free or highly uh, or very, very low lectin. Again, I'll cover that when we get to the lectin uh, day, and I think that's either Wednesday or Thursday again. Um, but again, nuts and seeds are going to are going to be high in fats as well. Um, and then, you know, the third component is going to be proteins. Um, proteins again are pretty self-evident. Uh, probably, if it's a meat, um, it's a protein, right? Um, so again, it could be uh, fish. I, I love fish as a protein. Um, fish is also high in good fats. Um, some fish. So again, fish. We do want to be careful when we're getting fish. We want to make sure that it's caught on the Atlantic side um, of the United States and not the Pacific side. Um, that's because uh, the Fukushima um, nuclear reactor has really polluted um, the Pacific Ocean quite a bit. And uh, I can't say that this is a perfect statistic, but nearly 100% um, of the fish that's caught on the Pacific side has some type of nuclear contamination. So um, now whether or not that's unhealthy, who knows, but let's just choose Atlantic side. And then also we want wild caught not wild captured. Um, wild caught fish uh, means that it was just fish swimming around in the ocean. Um, and also I would say on top of this, we want to make not only, not only sure wild caught, but ethically sourced. Um, and there's a little uh, blue symbol on um, the fish, uh, uh, either packaging or on the label at the, at the, uh, at the uh, butcher. Um, well, they, they will literally have, uh, this was ethically uh, caught fish. Uh, but nonetheless, we want to make sure that it's caught in the ocean, not captured. Captured means that it was probably farm-raised and then released into the wild and then recaptured. Farm-raised food can be okay as well, as long as it is being tested for you know, toxicities like um, mercury, uh, dioxanes, uh, PCBs, um, you know, things like that. Again, uh, we do, you know, not to mention you know, bacteria and et cetera, we do see a lot of problems with farm-raised anything, um, and, you know, but at the same time, um, we have to you know, choose our weapons, I guess, so to speak, and choose our battles. Um, but nonetheless, uh, fish, poultry is another great um, option for, uh, uh, for, for, uh, for pro poultry is a good option for protein. Man, my, my, my mouth isn't working today, and I'm sorry, guys. Um, but, you know, um, chicken, uh, you know, turkey, um, any of the poultries could be okay. Um, and then, you know, kind of moving down there, um, red meat can be okay for some people. We typically say avoid red meat uh, during the uh, detox. And again, um, I'm not trying to make that difficult or, or at all, but at the same time, um, sometimes red meat can cause problems with folks um, with sensitivities. And then also a lot of American red meat has uh, an overabundance of uh, casein in it. Um, casein is a dairy protein that a lot of people do not do well when we do food sensitivity testing. So again, um, typically we, we try to have people steer away from red meat at least during their first round of detox. Um, and then, you know, um, we can get exotic, uh, of course, with the proteins. Um, so we had, uh, again, vegetables, fats, proteins, um, berries. Berries are very key uh, in the Epic 5 uh, metabolic detoxification diet. Berries are, you know, especially berries with seeds on the outside, are very high in a couple of chemicals called dimethylmethane and indyl-3-carbonyl to help balance out hormones, as are cruciferous vegetables, by the way, which is why they're emphasized. Um, berries also are high in antioxidants to fight off free radicals, um, help uh, you know, uh, with cancer recovery, cancer prevention. Um, that literature has been out for quite a while. Um, and berries also function as our sweet. Um, you'll notice that there's not really anything sweet on the diet. Um, there's not you know, uh, sugars, carbs, not even grains, um, because grains are very inflammatory. Grains can muck up the metabolic system. Grains can certainly 
induce autoimmune cascades, um, which is why on almost every autoimmune plan, uh, people are taken off of grains, or at least any good autoimmune plan uh, taken off of grains. So again, berries serve a lot of purposes, including um, serving the sweet tooth, so to speak. Um, and then the last thing that we add in, um, the fifth thing is acids. Um, acids are very important. Uh, lime juice, lemon juice, apple cider vinegars, acids um, not only help stimulate digestion where they break down proteins in the gut, um, in, the, in the stomach, um, but those acids also mix with our food, go to the digestive tract and stimulate the pancreas to release digestive enzymes and stimulate the liver and the gallbladder, um, if you still have a gallbladder, um, otherwise just the liver, to release bile and bile salts. Um, which again, this all basically breaks our food down into the nutrients that we need. Ultimately, the foods that we're eating need to be translated into nutrients. Um, also, just kind of across the board, this is a low glycemic um, diet, meaning a low sugar diet, um, but I would not call it keto or paleo um, uh, because we are plant-based, um, plant-focused anyway. Um, and also this diet is very full of fiber. Um, fiber feeds are good uh, beneficial probiotic bacteria. Um, that help you know digestion again, and then also we're finding out more and more that there's a relationship between the probiotic bacteria in the brain, the probiotic bacteria in the heart, um, you know, um, the 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 liver, etc. Um, our immune system, probiotic uh, bacteria are very important. And I'll I'll pop a bubble right now. Um, the the supplements that we take for probiotics almost exclusively do not actually seed the gut. Um, uh, in fact, a lot of them are not human strain. Um, so be careful what you're purchasing and be careful what you put into your body. My patients know that I'm a less is more guy. I don't like to prescribe, um, supplementation, um, not e excuse me, not even probiotics unless it's absolutely necessary. So again, um, I'm just going to hit those again and uh, remind everybody, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them into the chat box. Um, I will answer them, but again, hydration is key. It's the foundation. Um, if you haven't started working on your water, I want you guys to start pushing your water up, add a pinch of salt if you need to. Um, vegetables, again, green vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, um, and, and colored vegetables. How much of those? Five to 13 cups a day. Um, and again, some of that's a crossover. Total of nine cups, um, three cups of each of those. So three cups of greens, three cups of cruciferous, three cups, cups of colored vegetables. But again, we get some crossover, like I mentioned, um, like with arugula, could be a green and a cruciferous vegetable. Um, we want healthy fats, as we mentioned, healthy proteins. Um, berries will be your sweet for the most part. What's a berry? It has the word berry in it. It's probably okay. Um, what about juices? Stay away from them. Um, we want the whole food. Juices are nothing but liquid sugar. Um, please stay away from juices uh, unless otherwise directed by me or another one of your um, healthcare providers um, that also understands you know, um, metabolism and uh, uh, overall health. And then lastly, acids, again, to stimulate digestion. So again, you know, what does that shopping list look like? you're probably just gonna to go to the produce section um, and the meat section of your grocer. Um, you might you know, find yourself over in a health market, um, whether it's you know, locally here, we have a chain called uh, hy V, and they've done a really good job. We've worked with um, their nutritionists over there to help them build up their health market and um, given some recommendations. Uh, uh, but there's also Whole Foods. You know, um, I work a lot with natural grocers as well um, and you know, do some lectures for them. I think I have a lecture coming up, I think this Saturday, at uh, one of the local natural grocers uh, where I'm gonna be talking about intermittent fasting. Um, and if you guys wanna join that, it's the one in Iowa City. I believe it's this Saturday and it certainly will post about it. Um, we have so many events going on, it's hard to keep up with posting about that. Um, but again, you should, uh, you should be able to go to any of these places and make sure to get organic if you can. Um, you know, and if not, just get the real food, the whole food. Um, I would rather have you eating uh, real whole food um, that's not organic than going uh, and getting box can wrap packaged processed organic food. Um, please stay away from anything that's been processed. Um, this is a whole foods detox. Um, and you, you can thank me um, in about three weeks when you're feeling fantastic. Um, and again, people always want to know, what do you do after the detox, right? Um, I'll tell you what, um, we have a, a section in the Teachable that's called Day 22 and Beyond. And again, um, what we do by that point with my clients, um, we have their food sensitivities and we've been able to strategize the perfect diet for them. It's basically the Epic Five plan minus their food sensitivities um, for most people. These are general statements, of course. Um, but at the same time, just keep doing it. I mean, if you're feeling better, why would you ever stop doing, you know, uh, something that's making you feel better, right? Especially something so natural and so healthy for your body. We will be talking 
And again, I don't know if it's Tuesday or Wednesday, um, a little bit down the road um, about bringing your tribe in, um, you know, helping your friends and family do this with you. I'm a big believer that the more people that do this with you, the more successful that you'll be. And of course, then we're spreading the love around and spreading the health around. Um, but also we're going to talk about saboteurs, um, some of the people that are closest to us, um, especially our best friends and family. Um, you know, it, it kind of wonks them out sometimes that you're making these changes. And um, a lot of times they'll do everything they can to sabotage you um, just because uh, of, of their own psychology, guys. That's not because of anything that you're doing. Um, that's because of them. And we'll talk more about that and dive deeply into that. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I'm going to answer some questions that came in and um, uh, just kind of keep going back and forth a little bit. Uh, so uh, we have, if taking antibiotics or on a medicine from a doctor, uh, would you still prescribe antibiotics um, or still not prescribe antibiotics? Um, that's a great question. In fact, um, I had one of my own personal clients um, that had to jump on an antibiotic here uh, earlier, actually over the weekend, and she had the exact same question. And the answer is we actually have a whole protocol that we use to repair the gut uh, from antibiotic damage. Um, so again, we uh, work with an anti-inflammatory. Um, antibiotics are always inflammatory to the gut every single time. Um, antibiotics also destroy the gut lining and destroy the mucus lining, the mucosal lining um, in the gut. And um, we need to repair that as well. So we, we have a couple products for that. And then we do prescribe probiotics. Um, specifically, typically I prescribe spore-based um, probiotics. Uh, and that's because the spores of the probiotics can last and live through the stomach acid. Most probiotics that you're taking die in the stomach. They're, they're, most of them are worthless and shouldn't be sold to anybody. So be careful again about the probiotic that you're taking. You want to make sure that you're taking something that can survive past the stomach um, and past the bile salts because those bile salts released from the liver and gallbladder will also kill those probiotics. So again, we got to really strategize and make sure that we're using um, the right products. Not everything is created equally. And I know we all like to bargain shop. I do too. Um, but I will tell you that my experience in 20 years, um, having prescribed both medicines and supplements, I will tell you that in the supplement industry, this isn't universally true, but you get what you pay for. Um, you need to use pharmaceutical grade probiotics. There are only a few companies um, on the planet that go through um, pharmaceutical grade uh, testing, um, uh, pre-batch testing, batch testing, and then what we call post-production assays and then also formulation to make sure that it can be delivered um, to your body in the right way. And each one of those steps costs a little bit more. So you know, you're not going to be able to go out and buy a great probiotic for three to, three to $5. Um, it's just not going to happen. Um, but again, here's the cool thing. Anything that I prescribe to my patients, they're always gonna be you know, with some rationale, some clinical rationale or based on labs, right? Um, and then we also give a timeline for it. I don't want anybody to take anything for the rest of their lives. Um, unless there's some genetic reason to do so. Um, as an example, I have a vitamin D uh, receptor polymorphism due to my genetics. My vitamin D receptors are misshapen and uh, I don't absorb vitamin D as well as the average Joe. So I have to take copious amounts of vitamin D to keep my system, you know, my levels good, but also to regulate my immune system. And again, I think what I'll do down the road is have a, a whole autoimmune um, uh, version of this. Uh, I could, I could, talk for hours and hours and hours on that. Uh, and again, I think um, we'll do that later, but you know, nonetheless, um, and I hope Anna, that answers your question, but um, yes, we do prescribe those for a, a, for a very specific amount of time, but also not just probiotics. You have to repair that damage that's being done. You have to unwind that, um, that inflammation, repair that gut wall, and then um, seed the gut with specific probiotics and then feed that probiotic bacteria to make sure that it's growing and growing and growing. Typically, it takes about 90 days to do that for every round of antibiotics. Um, and guys, just to let you know, NSAIDs, so non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs of all sorts, and every single antibiotic that you take 100% of the time, even with one dose, will do exactly what I said. Stir up inflammation, kill off your probiotic load, um, so cause dysbiosis imbalance in the gut, and cause um, intestinal permeability issues, um, sometimes called leaky gut colloquially. So again, um, and I hope that answered that question. Um, and again, if you have any more questions on that, by all means, you can private message me and I'm happy to um, kind of sort through it with you. Uh, everybody has a different answer. And that's the cool and hard thing about functional medicine is there is no one specific protocol for everybody for everything. Um, we have to look at each person as a unique individual um, and help them out um, uniquely and individually and help them with personalized medicine. Um, so again, guys, uh, boy, that went a lot longer than I thought. I thought we'd have about 30 minutes um, of material. Um, yeah, you're welcome, Anna. You bet. Um, and I hope that you can join us tomorrow. Um, but guys, I hope that that laid out the basics. When you go to the store, you're going to go to the produce section 
and probably um, the meat section. Um, you're going to get uh, green vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, um, you know, colored vegetables that are not nightshades. Uh, you're going to uh, get healthy fats, healthy proteins, berries. Make sure to get some acid, um, lemon juice, uh, lime juice, apple cider vinegar. Um, I think that we'll talk about smoothies, I believe, tomorrow or the next day. Um, we'll be combining some of these pieces into make it make what we call the epic green smoothie um, that can help you with the, your own vitamins and minerals, um, fiber, antioxidants, balance hormones, the list goes on and on. Um, also later this week, we're going to again be talking about, um, you know, why we're doing this. Um, not just, not just, you know, we want to be detoxified and feel better, but really digging deep into why are we as individuals bothering to be healthy? We're going to talk about saboteurs. We're going to talk about lectins. Um, and then we're going to be putting it all together and answering your questions along the way. Guys, I'm so excited that we're doing this together. What I want everybody to do is post pictures of their meals. Um, ideally every night, I'm going to try to live up to that as well. Um, sometimes I make a meal and I have the full intention to do that. And then I eat the meal and I forgot to take a picture. Um, but ideally it'd be great if we could share our meals and get, give momentum to each other, share recipe ideas, um, so that we can all, you know, build. And then of course, if somebody sends a recipe over or posts a recipe and it's not quite on plan, then I can, you know, weigh in and say, Hey, that was pretty good. And I'm sure it tastes good, but instead of this, let's do this next time. Um, and again, I'm happy to do that. Um, thanks Christy. I think, by the way, Christy, I'm glad that you're here. Um, I'm glad everybody's here. As a matter of fact, um, Tiffany and Karen, you guys too. Uh, but nonetheless, um, I think that will be a good idea that we can share recipes, um, build our recipe uh, repertoire, so to speak. I can learn to cook some things. Um, you guys will learn very quickly that I'm an Instant Pot guy. Um, I literally cook on uh, with three things in my life. My Instant Pot, I have a griddler, um, one of those Cuisinart griddlers, um, and we bake a lot. And that's, that's it. I barely, I don't even know if we use my stove anymore, um, which is kind of funny. Um, but nonetheless, uh, guys, I, I'm, a slow cook, I'm a slow cook guy. That, didn't make any sense. So, and I also like easy cleanup. Guys, I hope that helped. I hope that laid down the foundation. Um, uh, I hope that laid down the foundation. And um, by all means, um, if you have any questions, reach out to me privately on Facebook. Um, uh, if you're my client, of course, reach out through the portal, um, the private messaging portal. Um, otherwise, you can reach me on Facebook. Just send me a private message. I'm happy to help out in any way that I can, guys. 2020 is the year that I want to reach as many people as possible. So please invite your friends, your family members, your coworkers, your church mates, um, your, certainly anybody living in your house, um, anybody that you want to be part of your tribe to do this with you. I promise you that it's going to be um, more successful if, if we do this together as a group. Um, I've been doing this you know, for a very long time now um, with smaller groups. I think we have two or 300. I think we have over 300 people in our group right now, which is great. Um, and guys, we're just going to own it. 2020 is your year. 2020 is my year. Um, we're going to push our health, our health, our health, is that a word, um, to the next level. Um, and, and we're just going to own it. Listen, I love you guys. Thanks for joining. Um, and I will chat with you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.